Hey, and thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This week's video, we're going to be kicking off a playlist series on uh, Stronghand Tools Build Pro Welding Tables, a uh, heavy duty precision welding table. And we're going to be making some parts using this welding table. And what we're going to be doing is making some remote control sewer cameras that go up inside sewer pipes and inspect. Hey, this is Jody from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I'm inside a new building that's going to be a welding area. It's a friend's machine shop that I do a lot of work for, and we've got a project coming up on some remote control sewer tractors that hold fiber optics material, uh, equipment, and uh, they're motorized. It's going to take a little fabrication, and uh, we've got a strong hand table welding table, precision welding table that we're going to set up in this building and we're going to create a welding area here, set up a welding area with that strong hand table and uh, but it's not quite ready yet. So what we're going to have to do today because we have to get some welding done is we're going to use the Nomad portable table. I'm going to wheel it, I'm going to bring it from my house and wheel it up and we're going to park it outside the shop and pull the welding machine right out the door and go ahead and get our welding done for today and we'll give you some tips and tricks on how we're going to do the first part of that welding here in just a minute. But this is going to be the welding area. This is going to be where the strong hand pool is set up. And we're going to give you an up-close view on, uh, on how that thing works and how awesome it is. Flatness within four thousandths of an inch. Uh, it's a sturdy, sturdy table. It's pretty impressive when you, when you see it, how sturdy it is. The, the catalogs don't do it justice. The pictures on Northern Tool don't do it justice. It's a heavy precision table and it's very affordable for what it is. It's got precision drilled uh, holes in it and tooling packages that let you uh, index things and re repeat uh, short run production runs and it's just pretty awesome. So we're going to set it up in here. We're going to do a series on uh, on welding with that strong hand table, but it's like again, it's not quite ready yet. The wiring's done, we got lighting, but final touches are being put on this uh, this building right here. In just a few days, we'll set that table up. We'll video how to put it together and, and uh, what we run into on, on uh, putting the precision slats all together. And so you'll get a really good idea on what that strong hand table is all about. And we'll do a series on that as we document the build of these sewer crawlers. All right, well, stay tuned. I think you'll, you'll find it interesting. You've probably seen the Strong Hand Build Pro tables on the Internet or on Northern Tool Catalogs. I'm telling you, the pictures don't do them justice. When you get up close and personal, like this is sitting in the back of my friend's truck when we picked it up from UPS, a heavy-duty table. We had to take it apart so we could lift it up and get it in. We're going to have to put it back together, but that's all good so we can video that. But today, all I need to do is some light duty welding, and I'm going to use this uh, nice portable light duty Nomad welding table. And uh, I was really surprised how handy this thing came in with, with some of the features it has. Get started is going to use some good anti spatter spray found at your local grocery store. That's worth watching the video. That one tip right there because it works about as good as anything for spraying your nozzles and any surface you don't want spatter to stick to. Doesn't take much of a coat either. You can wipe you can wipe the excess off. When we, what we want to do before we get started is we want to clean the uh, the MIG nozzle out and uh, I want to recommend that if you're going to do much MIG welding get a Leatherman tool even if you can just even if you just buy a knockoff but uh, handiest thing for cleaning out spatter and for snipping wire, which is something you're always having to do when you're MIG welding, you need, and you can't ever find your wire snip. So if it's on your side, you'll be able to find it. I like to have my contact tip sticking out just a little bit. That's what I recommend. Again, we're going to be uh, building the body of this uh, remote control sewer crawler. And it's a sewer crawler. It goes down inside sewers in sewage, but it has to be right. It can't leak for obvious reasons, and uh, can't track crooked or go in circles. So what we're doing today is we're building the front flange on this thing. We're welding the bar stock and the stiffener plates on so that it can be milled off flat, drilled, and tapped. So here's another view of this thing, and uh, it starts off as a piece of square tubing, and you start adding hardware and axles and bosses and side plates, and first thing you know it, it weighs about 80 pounds or so. So it's uh, it gets a, it's a heavy duty little piece of equipment. So what we're doing is we're using the little Nomad portable table and we're just welding these chamfered pieces of bar stock on. Chamfered again because you just can't burn in 
uh, with MIG welding or practically any other kind of weld, and you can't just put edge to edge up like the, uh, and and burn in deep enough uh, to mill it off and not have a line show up. So the way I used to do it is just like this, just kind of eyeball them because the ends and the, and all the welds get milled off flat anyway. So if there's a little sticking over, it's not a big deal. And just put a few tacks on it before I would weld it. But with this Nomad table, um, I discovered that since it's got that little adjustable fence gauge on the edges, that came in really handy for uh, lining these things up and tacking them. So I was able to take this little fence, adjust the height of, of it low enough that it wouldn't be in my way for tack weld in the corner, and then just push the uh, square tubing up against it flush, flat on the Nomad table, and then uh, lining the bar stock up with the chamfer where it's supposed to be, flushing it up against there too, and then I could get a MIG gun right there on that corner and pop a tack on it. Easy as pie. And once they're tacked up, my main goal is to burn in deep right here because that's what's going to be milled off flat. And I don't want a line showing back up and I don't want to have to go in there and, and grind and repair and weld it twice. The stiffener plates uh, pose a little bit of a challenge because you have to get up inside there and you can't put very much weld. The welds have to be smooth and flat. So it's not too hard, but the MIG nozzle's always in my way and uh, it's just always been a little bit of a challenge. So uh, they're recessed back up in there a little bit because these aren't chamfered and I'll show you how I deal with that in a minute. Being able to tilt the Nomad table using the tilt feature helped tremendously. I got it up high enough where I could get a good line of sight and then I just pushed those uh, fillet welds downhill which made them nice and flat. Because if they're not nice and flat, if they stick up beyond a certain point, there's motors and hardware and gears that go inside this thing and you have to get a carbide burr or something and grind off any, any excess weld and that's no fun. So it's a lot better just to be able to put a nice small fillet weld in there and, and getting that thing up on an angle and pushing them downhill worked out perfect. Now for the final, uh, for welding all these bar stock in, I tilted it back even further and the back fence gauge kept them from falling off the end. Again, my main goal on these welds is just to smoke them in there good and hot because all this is going to be milled off flat anyway. And on this uh, 11 gauge stiffener plate, it's, instead of chamfering it, it's just recessed back about 330 seconds of an inch and then I go really nice and slow and intentionally put a, a high crowned uh, bead that will mill off and leave plenty of surface area. Because again, this is all going to be milled flat and then drilled and tapped and then the cover plate will have an O-ring uh, in it. It's got to have some surface to seat to. So, knocked them all out. This weld here, this is the most fun one to make look good anyway, and this one does need to look good because it's not going to be milled off. So, you know, I just set it up around 20 volts, 250 inches a minute with 035 uh, B70S6 wire, and uh, trying to make them look kind of pretty. Well, here's what happened. It rained. Even though this building wasn't quite ready, we didn't think it was ready yet, we went ahead and moved the welder in here because the storm was blowing up. So, got finished welding all these, uh, all the front ends of these things anyway, putting the bar stock on and then the uh, 11 gauge stiffener bar stock on the inside. So, I'm tired. It's hot in Georgia. It's dark. It's probably still 90 degrees and 90 something percent humidity. So, sweating a little bit. It's all good though. Good day's work. <laughs>